You're watching DCTV Denton Community Television. Praise God, praise God, praise God. What another wonderful day it is that the Lord has made, and in it I will rejoice and be glad. And I hope that you can say the same thing because you know what? God knows exactly what we need. The weather is beautiful, raining, and don't we need some rain? Hallelujah. Yes, we do, and I thank God for that. Praise God. You know, I'm so thankful to serve a God. You know, I won't say a God, but the God because he's not a God. He is the God. Hallelujah. He is the God of the universe. He made it. Hallelujah. And everything that's therein. Praise God. Praise God. And I am just so happy today. Praise God. You know, we had a wonderful resurrection yesterday. And, you know, I sometimes hesitate to say that because I have a resurrection day every day. Hallelujah. Because I serve Jesus Christ and him crucified. Hallelujah. Buried and resurrected and now at the right hand of the Father, ever interceding on our behalf, those that believe in him and that will call upon him. Praise God. And I'm just so thankful to be able to come once again into your home or wherever you may be during this broadcast. Hallelujah. It is such a blessing. Praise God. And I'm so thankful. Hallelujah. That I am able to be able to continue our study in the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter. You know, God has been dealing with me because it seemed like that is where the people are missing it. I'm, they're missing a lot, but I believe this will kind of help them to wake up a little bit, to know that we have liberty in Christ if you have accepted him, hallelujah, as your Savior and your Lord. He has given you freedom to live a holy, a righteous Listen, I want you to understand that, to live a holy and righteous life. He has given you freedom to do that. Praise God. And that's what we are going to continue our series on from the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter. But first of all, I'm going to have a word of prayer. And then, I, well, I got an announcement to make also, but it's not until July. But I do want to get everybody ready and prepared because in uh, July, I don't know exactly what day, which would be on a Saturday, uh, in Shreveport, Louisiana, which is my hometown, uh, I'm holding a um, camp meeting in 2015 in Shreveport, Louisiana at the Prince of Peace Baptist Church in July, but I will be giving you more information, and also I'm going to have it on uh, at the end of the broadcast where you can see it. And if you would like to go with us, then you can give me a call or whatever and let me know. But uh, right now, I don't know exactly the date. The Lord hadn't given me the date yet, but I know it's in July. Praise God. So I will be... Uh, talking to you more about that. Praise God. You know, it, it's just a wonderful thing, you know, and I just, you know, I, I, you know, I know I got to continue with Galatians, but I tell you, I just got so much I want to talk about. Praise God, because God is so good and he is working miracles. He is doing great things in people's lives. And many people are just missing the blessing. They are missing the privilege that God, through his son, Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary Cross for them, they are missing that privilege, that blessing that he has given unto us. Praise God. That's the reason why I want to continue to deal with it in Galatians, to let you know, hallelujah, maybe you don't know. And then I'm going to go into a um, series of deception because a lot of us are deceived and we don't know it. And then many do know it, but they're so comfortable and they're so stagnated where you at that you don't want to move. But see, there's the time, there is going to come a time, which is the time is now, that you're going to have to change. You're going to have to do something different. Hallelujah. Praise God because God is good and he wants to meet your need. He wants to help you. He Listen, when God sent his son, Jesus Christ, down here to die for you and I, our sin, yes, he did. You know, and he defeated the devil. Yes, he did. He died upon the cross for you. I mean, why would you let that go? I mean, he did it for you. Praise God. And I tell you, I love to let people know what a 
a blessing that I know. Oh, I listen, listen to me. What a blessing that I know what God is able to do through his word. I would know it if I had to listen to all this stuff that you all are listening to. I wouldn't know that. But by the studying of his word, I know more about him, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And that's what makes me want you to know. Hallelujah. Because, see, you're missing. You're missing your blessing. You're missing what God has prepared for you. You're missing what he has done for you. You're missing what he has given to you. Praise God. But li listen, as I get, we're going to go right into uh, Galatia, but I'm going to have a word of prayer. And I want you, wherever you may be, I don't care where that, just kind of calm yourself down. And we're going to have a word of prayer. Praise God. Because I know, I know many of you are struggling, you know, because I get the call and you need someone to stand in the gap with you. And listen, and I want you to pray. Get your mind off everything else and let us just concentrate on one. And that one person is Jesus Christ, who is able, who is able to meet whatever the need is. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, once again. Lord, that we are able, Father God, hallelujah, to stand right once again to preach the gospel, the message of the cross, Jesus Christ and him crucified, what he done there for us, hallelujah. Oh, Father God, that we may live a holy and righteous life. Oh, Father God, I thank you right now. Oh, hallelujah, the many that may be viewing the broadcast right now, I pray whatever the circumstances, whatever the situation they may be facing, Father, only you, Father God, can work it out. I pray that they will cry out to you, call upon your holy and righteous name, and Father God, and see you work a mighty miracle in their life. Because Father God, you is able, hallelujah, there is nothing impossible, oh hallelujah, for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you right now for all that you do, and Lord, we know that without you, we are unable to do anything. Thing. And I thank you, Father God, right now. And Lord, as I look into your word this morning to bring the message from the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter, I pray the leading and the guide and the operation of the Holy Spirit. Father God, let the Spirit, Father God, illuminate my spirit. Hallelujah. That I may speak, Father God, into the hearing and the hearts of your people, that they will be so touched and they will be so changed and move, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And thank Thank God. Praise God. Praise God. Now, if you have your Bible, I want you to go to the book of Galatian in that fifth, that fifth chapter. And I'm going to pick up on that um, fourth verse. But before I do that, I want to go back to the first verse and kind of bring you up to where uh, I stopped off at last time. That first verse said, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ had made us free. You see what he say? And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, Paul is saying not only to the Galatian church, but he is, this is for us too. This is the new covenant, which is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Paul is saying to us that, listen, he said, Christ's death on the cross. You got to hear this good before you can understand it. Christ's death on the cross. And he did it for us, the whole world. And he had made us free, given us liberty, freedom to live a holy, a righteous life. You understand that? And now if your, listen, if your faith is not in Jesus Christ and him crucified, what he done on the cross, then you are still in bondage to the law. Now, I, you know, I, I want to say not the, the Mosaic law, but most people are still under the Mosaic law. And that, that shouldn't be. But what I want you to understand, you have been set free from that because of what Jesus Christ done for you on Calvary. He's setting you free. So if you are still trying to uh, do the festivals and do all of these things and do this and go back and say, well, Moses them did it and this and that did it. And so, so you're still on the bottom. And see, you can't sprout the fence with Jesus Christ. You're going to have to make up in your mind and say, we're going to serve as Joshua said about his family. For as me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So you're going to have to make up in your mind, what are you going to stay in a stagnated place or you're going to get where the water is flowing. That's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
So you go have to make up in your mind. Praise God. You see, so many of us, we, we you know, uh, we, we, we set in on the things and on the people and this and that. And you don't know whether it's right or wrong because you don't know the word. But you see, once you know the word, you can't look, you cannot be deceived. Hallelujah. See, th th let me tell you, deception is one of the powerful weapons of Satan. Deception. That means you can be so deceived by this because you see, people can say things and twist it and make it put a little scripture in it and make it sound real good. And so all you're going to say, yeah, you know, and, 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 and that's not it. You've got to know what did the word of God say? Just like Paul said, stand fast, therefore. That means don't you move. Don't, listen, when you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord, and you, your eyes, your faith is that, listen, you have your faith in Jesus Christ, the person, and what he done there on the cross. He did everything for you. So when your faith is in that, listen, can't nobody deceive you. you, you I mean, you may ask the question, can anybody deceive Pastor Jerry? No. I'm going to tell you right this minute, no. You can't deceive me because I know the word. And, and when I say I know the word, I don't talk about I have it up in my head, but it's in my innermost being. It's in my spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, on my way here, to the studio this morning, I was praying. I said, Lord, I can't do this without the power of the Holy Spirit. I need the help of the Holy Spirit. You know, it would be something for me to get up here and try to, you know, do all this stuff here without the help. I, you know, I wouldn't even try because I can't do it. You cannot teach or preach this word without the power of the Holy Spirit. You, you got to have it. And see, so many are trying to write it down, trying to go back and down into all these books and things and write it down and then give it to you. And it's not even helping them, neither you. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. I wasn't born yesterday. I was born in a day, but it wasn't yesterday. Believe me. Hallelujah. And so we need to get to the word of God and understand what God is saying. Now, listen to what Paul said. Paul said, now I'm going to skip down to that fourth verse, but I want you to understand something. What I'm trying to get you to see, you are free. Christ has given you freedom to walk in the things of God. Hallelujah. You don't have to be entangled anymore back there with the law of Moses or, or some of these law of men are making up. Oh boy, I don't want to get on that because I would never shut up. Hallelujah. Because see, I know what I'm talking about. Praise God. And people need to hear the truth. You are not, listen, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord, you've been baptized in water. Hallelujah. By being baptized in water is an identification for the, what happened on the inside of you. Hallelujah. You accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Praise God. Listen to me. Hallelujah. So now you have that freedom to walk in the things what Jesus has what given you in his word. Huh? You, and, and now, I, when I say freedom, I don't mean you have a, the license to do anything you want to do, but I mean to live a holy, righteous, and godly life. Hallelujah. And you can do that. In Christ, you can do it. Because not only were you baptized in water, hallelujah, but the Bible tells us you're baptized into his death. Hallelujah. Praise God. When you accepted him, praise God, you was baptized into his death. Hallelujah. When they put him in the ground, everything that was, listen, that was wrong in you was put in the ground with him. When he got up, hallelujah, resurrected. Hallelujah. You was resurrected with a new body. Woo! Good God Almighty. The, the old thing, listen, the thing that used to be wasn't anymore. New, new now. Hallelujah. This is what I want you to understand. Why Paul so firmly says, stand fast. Don't let nobody deceive you. Don't let nobody just say anything to you to make you. That, that's the thing. That's what it is. You know, they're just making you feel good. I'm not, in, I'm not up here to make you feel good. Honey, I'm up here to tell you the truth. Honey, change your mind. Honey, renew your mind in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. And listen, in that, in that post verse, let's skip down to there. Well, Paul say, Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law. Do you hear what he said? See, a lot of see, we still holding on to the law. We want to hold on to this. Now, I can go through a lot of uh, 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 things and tell you about what, what we try to hold on today. Because, see, a lot of people think going to church save you. Going to church don't save you. But th that's the truth. And I'm going to say that again. Listen, listen, going to church don't save you. 
Some people think off they, you know, they they every Sunday sitting on the front row, honey, you know, with the big hat on, the prepper shoes on, all this mess. They think that's going to save That don't save you. Uh -uh, that don't save you. No, no, no. Some people go, well, they call they, you know, they the pastor like them, the pastor wife like you. Oh, yeah, you know, you, they think that saves you. But listen at what I'm telling you what's in the word of God. And I'm not reading from no paper. I'm reading from the word. Hallelujah. Listen what it say. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law. You know, when you say you got to do that, and honey, I got to white this thing here, and I got to put this, and I got to do that. Oh, that's just law, honey. Let me tell you something. Listen what it say. It say, you are fallen from grace. Ho, oh, listen what it say. You are fallen from grace. Isn't that something? Now you say, what do you mean by falling from grace? Well, I'll tell you. Listen what it say here. What does it mean when, when they say you're falling from grace? I'll tell you. It, when you place your faith in anything else other than Jesus Christ, you're falling from grace. That means if you believe it in the law, because see, if you try to keep the law, you got to keep the whole law and you can't do it. And first of all, the law can't save you. Hallelujah. Oh, good God. The only thing the law did back then in the Old Testament were pointed us to Jesus Christ. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. So don't tell me, listen, you got to talk about, well, honey, we got to do this and we can't, we can't do that and I can't do this. All that devil with all that mess. That, I wouldn't let nobody make a fool out of me. Uh-uh. No, I can study my Bible. I study the word of God until, huh, listen, to the sun set. I mean that before I listen to all this stuff that's going on today and I mean what I say. Hallelujah. I tell you, I'm stirred up here right now. But I tell you, listen, Listen, because see, if you don't know the truth, if you don't know the truth and nobody telling you the truth, listen, we all in this mess. Well, I'm not going to be in that mess. Uh -uh, I'm not going to be in that mess. No, see, God has left. He left his 66 books here for us. Hallelujah. From Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21. Hallelujah. He left it here for us. And this is for us to live by. Hallelujah. Do I go back to the Old Testament under the Mosaic law? No. Jesus Christ done away with that on the cross according to the book of Colossians, the second chapter, 14 and 15 verse. He did away with it. Hallelujah. Study it for yourself. Hallelujah. And sometimes you need, you know, I wish that. Well, no, I, how, how can I say this? You know, it would be good if some of you all would go back into, into the house of God or wherever you go. You know, it's just kind of shame to say church anymore because you just done messed that up with all this mess you're doing. But anyway, if you just go there and just change the atmosphere of it, just let that happen. Go to your pastor and tell him, Pastor, what? listen, are you preaching the message of the cross? Oh, I know I'm going to get some letters. That's fine. It don't make me no different. I'll read them. Listen, because that's what the Bible is. Hallelujah. It's the word of, you know, I, I tell you, you no, know, God, I tell you, listen, when Jesus Christ gave me the revelation, hallelujah, praise God. When he gave me this revelation of the method of the cross, oh, it was hard. Oh, I said, oh, because see, see, all this other stuff they had planted in me. Oh, it was hard to uproot all that stuff. But baby, when I got to study the word of God and I saw this thing for myself, whoo, I say, Lord. I knew there had to be more to you than what these people were talking about here. Talking about ha and the ha and all that stuff. I don't want to hear that. They know ha ha in this Bible. Good God Almighty. Whew. Let me hush my mouth. Good God Almighty. Listen here what it says here. You are fallen from grace when your faith is not in Jesus Christ and the work that he done on Calvary Cross. And everything he done is in this word in the Bible right here. And he done it just for you and I. Oh, yes, he did for the whole world. To those that would believe him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, let's go to verse 5. Hallelujah. See, that's the reason why Paul was so, see, let me, let me, let me go back a little bit. You see, Paul had established this church in Galatia. And he had taught the people the message of the cross. And some accepted, you know, just like today. Some will, you know, will hear you and some won't. You can't make nobody hear you, you know. So when Paul left, those that were firmly standing for what he had preached, which was the right thing, then guess what happened? False teachers came in. Oh, yeah, those thought that they knew everything. The Judaizers and all of these people, they start coming in, telling the people that you got to be not only, uh, this is the, how they put it. I mean, you know, yeah, that you believe in Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. But not only that, you can't just, just stop there. You got to be circumcised. Now, Paul had taught them that. And they knew, some of them knew that, no, that, that don't sound right. 
See, if you know the word of God, you know when people tell teaching the word of God. And any of you listen to me, you know whether I'm teaching the word of God. Just get your Bible and follow me. <laughs> you know whether where I'm, where I'm coming from. And so listen, listen what he said. So see, this is the reason why Paul was, was really standing on these people to stand fast in what he had taught them. They was delivered from the law. Now listen in verse 5. He said, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Now isn't that something? Listen what it says. We through the Spirit, which means the Holy Spirit. It says, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. See, righteousness come to you by faith, by accepting what Jesus Christ done on Calvary. And so now I am the righteousness of God through by believing in what Jesus Christ done on Calvary. Now, if you think you can believe in what this one's saying and that one's saying and you going to church every Sunday and you there on Wednesday, you there on Friday, that that going to make you righteous. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, don't you cut that TV off because I'm going to tell you something. That is That will not. What has happened, let me tell you what has happened. You have fallen from grace. Hallelujah. And you want to know what grace is? Let me tell you. Grace, the grace of God is simple as this. Listen to me. It is the goodness of God. It's it to undeserving people like us, but he loved us enough whew, that through the cross, hallelujah, he walked grace to us when we didn't even listen. Do we deserve it? No, we don't. But he, Jesus Christ, died that we may have that. Hallelujah. Do you understand? See, the Bible is not hard to understand if you prayerfully pray over it and study it. Hallelujah. So now Paul is saying, for we through the Holy Spirit. And see, it's nothing you can do. It's nothing you can receive from Jesus Christ unless it come through by the Holy Spirit. Why you say that, Pastor? Well, I'm going to tell you why I said it. Because the Holy Spirit works entirely within the framework of the cross. What you mean by that? Listen, because when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, let's just say you, 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 you're praying for healing. You put your faith in Jesus Christ and what he's done for you at the cross. And yes, he died for your healing at the cross. All right? So that gives the Holy Spirit latitude to come down and work in your life. Hallelujah. But if you don't know that, <laughs> oh boy, I hope you get what I'm saying. Good God Almighty. I hope you get what I'm saying. Because you see, now, you know, if I had about four or five hours, I would just take it slow, slow, slow. I take one word at a time as the Holy Spirit will lead me to really, to really get you to see what I'm talking about. Now, listen, 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 listen at verse 6. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith with work is by love. Now, let's look at this word circumcision. Now, this is not the emphasis for us today. But I'm going to show you something that is the emphasis for us today. But Paul used circumcision because it was under the Mosaic law. Circumcision at that time was, you know, every man, a little boy had to be circumcised. And that brought them into the covenant of God under the Mosaic law. You get my point? Mm -hmm. All right. But now we don't have to deal with circumcision today. But there are a lot of other things that we try to put in that place. Now listen what Paul say, for in Jesus Christ neither cir not circumcision, it don't, it, it don't mean nothing. So what I'm trying to tell you, by you going to church every Sunday, by you, uh, uh, and even some people think speaking in tongues, Savior, uh, uh, being baptized, Savior, all this stuff, no, it does not. Hallelujah. It does not. Let me tell you something. The only thing that you need, listen, the only thing that you need to understand right now, and I want you to hear me good, your faith, and I mean your faith, your faith must evidently be in what Christ done on Calvary. Now, he, let me, let, I tell you what, let me go to the book of Colossians right quick. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me see, can I get to it? Here it is. Uh, Colossians in that third, in the fourth chapter. Listen what it says here in the second chapter. I'm sorry. In that 14th verse, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Okay. 
and have his far principalities and power. He made a show of them openly, triumphant over them in it. Now listen what is what I'm saying. You see, that's the law. He did away with that when he was nailed to the cross. Listen, all we have now is the what? Is to believe and put our faith in what Jesus have done for us. Huh? You see, if you try to live by the law now, you hundreds and you got to, you know, it's no ending to it. It's no end. They, next thing you know, they're going to add another one. Next thing you know, they're going to add another one. You know what they're called? The fence law. And because that's that's that, that's grinding them all up, and you cannot do it. You can't keep it. But when you look to Jesus Christ, He has made a way for you. Listen, whatever the circumstance is, He has made a way for you in order. Listen, for you to make it through, go through it, whatever it may be. He has done it for you at the cross. That's the reason why I love to tell people, and I want you to hear me good. I love to tell people that I live that abundant life. Now, I, I, I have to be honest with you. Years ago, I didn't know nothing about it. I heard they say the verse so many times, but I didn't know what they were talking about. But I thank God, I thank God that I have learned to study for myself, hallelujah, that I may know Jesus Christ, hallelujah, Oh, for who he is. Hallelujah. And that's the reason I can say today, hallelujah. And you know what? I, I, you know, I'm on television, and I, I, I'm so, so thankful for that because I want you to be able to say, I now live that abundant life. Jesus paid for it on Calvary. He said, Satan come to steal, kill, and destroy. And he does. That's what, the, I mean, Satan having a havoc time right now. Oh, yeah, because people have left the word of God. But Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And I live that abundant life. And I can stand here with, oh, hallelujah. I mean what I say, hallelujah, because I want you to live it. I want you to say it. I want you to believe it, hallelujah. Praise God. That's the reason why Paul was so stern in getting these peoples to come out from under the law. He taught them, but because of false teachers, because of false prophets. Everything you have coming in telling these people they got to do this and they got to do that and they got to do that. Let me say something to you. The law, and I, I think I've said it many times, the law said, do, 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 do. But the cross says, it's done. All you have to do now is put your faith in it. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish you, I, I just hope you get in this. Put your faith in what Jesus Christ has done for you. He has done everything. Let's look at verse uh, 7. He said, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Now, what Paul said, he's talking to some of these that fell for these false prophets. He said, you started off pretty good. Now, what, what, what hindered you? What hindered you? See, when you don't know the word, listen to me. This is where deception creeps in. When you don't know the word for yourself, you can become so blogged down, so blogged down with deception. You be deceived in your heart. You thinking that it's right, and it's not. So Paul said, you did, you started off real good. I mean, I left, and y'all were just as happy. You were just, I mean, so glad in the Lord and all of this. What happened? Listen at verse 8. This persuasion comes not of him that calleth you. Paul said, now, this thing that you're doing, I didn't tell you that. You didn't do this because of what I told you. Now, Paul already knew that these Judaizers had come in. They had come in and, and, and was teaching them about circumcision, that you can't be saved unless you are circumcised. You can't be saved unless you are circumcised. Praise God. I will see you next time. Praise God. Mm -hmm.